guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to the next video in the November journaling series. I am so excited that you guys have been loving these videos so much. It truly just warms my soul that we all are just loving journaling together. So thank you so much for watching. If you've been watching, thank you for voting on the community polls. So I asked you guys and the winning video for this week was journal prompts to reflect on 2020 and go into 2021 strong. So today I actually have 20 journaling prompts for you guys. So I split it up into 10 journal prompts to reflect on 2020 and then 10 journal prompts to go into 2021 strong. It's so weird for me saying like 2021. I don't know why I keep stumbling over that year, but I'm really excited to share this with you guys. These journaling prompts are definitely a little bit more geared towards like self-reflection and what you found helpful for 2020. I'm trying to keep things a little bit of a positive spin. I know 2020 has been a crazy year, but I thought that having some journaling prompts that were a little bit more positive just be a little bit beneficial. You know, I think it's important when we're reflecting on things to not always focus so much on the negative, but you know, try and find the good in every situation. I'm a strong believer in that. So these journal prompts are going to be a little bit more geared towards that and kind of reflecting on the good things that did happen this year. Uh, Cause like I said, I think you can find good in everything. So with that being said, I am going to jump in and talk first about the journaling prompts to kind of self reflect on this last year. Yeah, let's just jump into it. Uh, but before I do that, if you're not already subscribed, if you're new here, welcome. I'm so excited you're here. Please, please hit that subscribe button. And if you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up or share it, drop a comment. All of those things help other people see these videos too. And I would love to share this with as many people as possible. With that being said, let me share these journaling prompts with you guys. Okay, so the first journaling prompt for reflecting on 2020 is what are my favorite memories of 2020? Again, I know 2020 has been a crazy time, but there's gotta be favorite things and things that you enjoyed in a year, right? So take some time to write down your favorite memories of this year and favorite things that happened. The next journal prompt is what have you learned in 2020? And I'm sure we all have plenty to write about this topic, but I know for me, I learned some really big lessons this year um, and things that I just really wasn't obviously anticipating. And and it taught me a lot. So this next journal prompt is a great way to reflect on the things that you've learned and the lessons that you've learned throughout the year. Number three is how am I different than I was a year ago? I love doing this as a self-reflection at the end of the year because I think it's so important when we're going through our day-to-day -day lives, we don't really notice things are changing in us and that we see differences in compared to when we were younger. And I think that looking back at the end of the year is a great time to see, wow, I'm really a different person than I was a year ago. Or, you know, I've really grown in this area of my life compared to a year ago, things like that. Number four, is what is the most challenging thing that has happened in 2020 and how did I overcome it? So that last part is key, making sure again that we're still shifting that to a more positive mindset. So what was the biggest challenge that you personally felt that, that you faced and what did you do to overcome it? Whether it was positive or negative, either way you got through it because you're here and you are on the other side of it or maybe you're still working through it. But either way, you're doing things right now to help yourself cope with that. It can be, like I said, positive or negative, but if you do kind of have more of a negative side of it, like maybe I didn't cope with this as well as I should have, take that and look at it. Don't judge yourself for it and don't beat yourself up for it, but look at, okay, so I use these unhealthy coping mechanisms, you know, maybe what could I have used to, in a healthier way to overcome it? I know for me, that was a big one. I've learned a lot of more healthy coping mechanisms going through things in the year 2020. So that was something really good to reflect on for me was, okay, how am I coping with things and what can I do to improve that or to make it be a better way of coping with it? Number five, you know me, I love my gratitude, is what are you most thankful for in 2020? You can make this a list, you can do, you know, 10 things maybe that you're grateful for in 2020, but the other thing about this, and whenever I'm doing a gratitude practice, I really try to make sure that I'm feeling the gratitude. So you're not just writing, oh, I'm so thankful, blah, 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 blah. It's like, wow, like I'm really thankful for this. And you just, you can feel it. It feels different when you pause and actually appreciate what you're thankful for. It's a totally different thing than just writing down a list of things that you're happy happened kind of a thing. Number six is what are my top three accomplishments of 2020? These do not have to be huge grand gestures or grand things that you've accomplished, but it can be anything big or small. What are three things that you did in the year 2020 that you are proud of and that you want to be able to look back and remember like, yeah, that was, I really am proud of myself that I did that. It can be, you know, you're proud of yourself for getting out of your comfort zone for learning how to work from home. If you, you know, ended up having to work from home this year and you didn't normally anything, uh, learning to adapt to a situation, like all of those things can still be accomplishments. I think a lot of times when we say accomplishments, people think they have to be these like grand things and they don't, they can be big or small. Number Number seven is how did my overall outlook on life change in the year 2020? 
I kind of thought of this one at the end just because I think it's really important to realize that 2020 for all of us has been probably one of the craziest years that we've had to date um, as far as just a lot of things changing in our external world. And I think that for a lot of people, I could see that, especially for me at least, talking from my own experience, my outlook on life and things and how I approach things um, definitely changed in 2020. Uh, I feel like I'm much more grateful for things that I already have in my life. Uh, I think that for me, in before 2020, I was so goal-oriented that I kind of would, I guess, take for granted maybe would be the right word. Like, kind of just overlooked things that were already in my life to be grateful for because I was so focused on, like, that next goal and, like, accomplishing that next thing. And I think 2020 really forced me to stop because everything stopped and just look at what I actually already have in my life and how I already have so much to be thankful for. And I think it really shifted my perspective. So I think this is a great one to reflect on how that's changed compared to last year and this year, how your overall outlook on life has evolved this year. Number eight is what habits did I notice that I did throughout the year? I wanna preface this by saying like, don't judge the habits. You're not saying, oh, this was a good bit habit and this is a bad habit. It's just, uh, okay, I, did these things and I noticed that these things are becoming habits and you're just noticing that those things are present in your life because then when we get to the 2021 prompts we'll kind of come back to that but really taking the time to notice what habits you created and what habits you continued into the year 20 2020 <laughs> There's too many 20s happening. <laughs> uh, and number nine is what has been the best and worst decisions that you made in 2020? Try not to beat yourself up here. We all have made mistakes. It's just noticing it. So not going into details like, oh my gosh, I'm such a terrible person because I did this thing and that was the worst decision I made in 2020. That's not what I'm saying to do here. What I'm saying to do with this prompt is to just say, you know, yeah, this I made this decision and it wasn't the greatest decision because this happened and you're just noticing it, just putting it on paper. It's not, I'm a terrible person for doing this. I'm, I'm awful, I'm horrible and beating yourself up. That's not productive or healthy at all. Um, but just noticing it. And then same thing with the best decision. Like what was the best decision? What changed my life the most? Or what had an impact on my life that I made in 2020? And just noticing those things, reflecting on it and being aware of it. That's so important when you're reflecting on things to just, just notice things and not judge them or beat yourself up or be critical or anything like that. Just notice that those things are there. And then at number 10, oh, there's Bailey. <laughs> Always has to be by me every time I'm filming. Number 10 then, the last journal prompt is on a scale of one to 10, how do you feel about about 2020 and why so one being the worst 10 being the best on a scale how do you feel about the year overall and why do you feel that way and just noticing your emotions noticing how you're feeling and not judging or being self-critical so those are the 10 journaling prompts for reflecting on 2020 moving into 2021 these are the journaling prompts that are going to be kind of building yourself up and moving into the new year on a really solid note so journaling prompt number one for 2021 is if you could only accomplish one thing in the year 2021 what would it be can be anything just writing whatever comes to your mind here and i i encourage you with these journaling prompts for 2021 to not let what's currently happening and what happened in 2020 with everything that has been going on to kind of affect it just kind of treat it as if okay it's a clean slate we're starting over what would i accomplish if i could accomplish anything with this year if anything was possible number two again putting logic aside what are 10 things you'd love to do in 2021 they don't have to be goals they can just be like experiences things that you'd want to have do be anything just 10 things that you'd love to have in the year 2021. Number three is a good prompt. It's kind of a little bit of both, like reflecting on 2020 and going into 2021. But number three is to write a letter to yourself and give yourself credit for going through the year 2020, for making it through, for handling it as best that we all knew how, and now going into a new year. And give yourself like a pep talk, you know? Pep talk yourself. Really give yourself credit for making it through this year and how excited you are for a new year and a fresh start and just kind of, you know, boost yourself up a little bit. It will really make you feel really good and it will kind of lighten the mood a little bit. I feel like we all could use a little bit of a lighten the mood in 2020. <laughs> Number four is what is something you would like to overcome in 2021? So this goes back to the habits problem that we talked about in the 2020 section. But if you did notice that you had some kind of bad habits, and I don't, I don't like using like good or bad necessarily, but if you had some habits that you'd maybe like to change, what is one of those habits that you'd maybe like to overcome? Or even if it's not a habit, it can be, you know, maybe you tend to be really critical of yourself or you tend to overthink or be, you know, 
overly insecure about things. What is one thing you would like to overcome to help bring you into the best version of yourself going into 2021? Number five is what is your mood slash word slash theme of 2021? Uh, I've seen all kinds of different ways of this being phrased in the journaling community, but I think that just establishing one, one word is a really good way, but if you're not a word person, it can even just be a mood, like creating a aesthetic board on Pinterest or We Heart It. I like to use We Heart It a lot. I feel like that's more of an aesthetic sometimes than Pinterest because there's so many blog posts on Pinterest, but just creating something that kind of captures the vibe and the feeling and what you want 2021 to be about. So just writing more about that and kind of the, the feeling overall that you want to have of the year 2020. Number six is what experiences would you like to have in 2021? So this is a little bit different than one of the first prompts I mentioned in that I want it to be more about like things that you want to do. And, and it doesn't necessarily have to be, I, I know for a lot of people, things are still closed and all of that. So it doesn't necessarily have to be like going and doing something as an experience, but even just like experiences at home with your loved ones or things you'd like to try. Maybe you want to start a new hobby, like anything like that. What kind of experiences would you like to have? Number seven is if you got to the end of 2021 and you accomplished one goal, what goal would you be most excited about accomplishing? Uh, and the cool thing about this is once you actually journal about it, you'll find that you have one goal that's really sticking out to you. Like maybe if you're like me, I tend to have huge lists of goals all the time. That's my ENFP personality type. But I definitely noticed when I did this journal prompt that I had so certain things, like I had one goal that I was just like, that's what I want to go for. And the more you journal about this prompt, it's really cool because you'll see very clearly, even if you have multiple goals, that there's one that sticks out. And that's the goal that you should really focus on going into the new year. I think a lot of times we tend to overestimate what we can accomplish in a year, but like underestimate our capabilities. When you're setting, you know, your goals and your resolutions for the new year, instead of setting 10 resolutions, maybe you just set this one goal and you break down that goal into mini goals, mini challenges, I guess, goals, whatever you want to call it. And then you can like check those off as you go. And then by the end of the year, you've actually accomplished this one goal and you're going to feel so accomplished. I promise you, if you get that one goal accomplished, that's really sticking out to you right now, instead of, you know, trying to do 20 new year's resolutions. Journaling prompt number eight is what is one habit you would like to change or adopt in 2021? So again, going back to the journaling prompt that we were talking about earlier from 2020 about your habits. If there is a habit that you've really been wanting to start, uh, I know this can kind of turn into a new year's resolution, but I think that when we're focusing on too many habits at once, I've talked about this before when it comes to like habit trackers in your journals, I think we tend to get overwhelmed. So I like to just adopt one habit at a time and really like get that ingrained in my daily life and then I'll go in and add another one like so doing it kind of in bite-sized pieces like that has actually helped me sustain habits rather than trying to do like 10 new habits at one time and then do it for like a week and then I stop doing all of them. <laughs> Focusing on one habit and really thinking about what is the one habit that's going to have the most positive impact on my life. As much as I know that it's important to focus on the positives, I also know that there are times when times get tough, right? And that can happen in 2021. So comp number 10 is if and when times get tough in the year 2021, I want to remember that and then fill in the blank. This can be a letter to yourself just in encouraging yourself, you know, you got through, you've gotten through your worst days before, you will get through this too. And just kind of setting it as a reminder, like everything will be okay. And even if it's not right now, it will be. And just really encouraging yourself and giving yourself some grace. You got through tough times before you can get through this. Just doing whatever it is, writing whatever it is that will encourage you to read. And then you can look back on that throughout the year. If there are times where you need a little pick me up, you're feeling down. This is so great to have to just be able to say yeah you know what i got through that i can get through that those are my journaling prompts for reflecting on 2020 doing some self-reflection as you move into the new year i am so excited that we already what is it like we have maybe 45 days left in 2020 so crazy i always get so excited when we go into a new year because i just think it's a really great way to start over with a fresh slate and my favorite. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys found these journaling prompts helpful. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're not already, be sure to subscribe and check out the other videos in the journaling series. I did create a new playlist on my channel with more specifically journaling related videos. Um, and I have a bullet journaling playlist as well as a plan with me playlist. So if you're into journals and planners like me, definitely check those out. But with that being said, be sure to vote on the poll on the community tab of my channel. I'm going to post that for next week's video so you guys can vote on that. I hope you guys found these journaling prompts helpful. Helpful, and I can't wait to uh, chat with you guys next week about next week's journaling video. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.